stage how are we all doing yes good nods are perfectly acceptable at this point that's fine thumbs up awesome stuff again thanks for sticking around at the expo stage we're having a wicked time so far you could even say an excellent time on easter weekend yes there's more of them jokes coming up later but if you guys are enjoying events if you've taken any pictures want to let us know how much you're loving it give us a tweet Write something on Facebook, put a picture on Instagram, use the hashtag I57, hashtag Expo Stage, and we'll, uh, we'll look at them and love them. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand over to some very capable hands. We are going to be showing you a brand new game today. And we are going to be giving you an exclusive look with one of the voice actors in the game as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for Chris and Terrorizer. <clears throat> oh, it's it's on. Hi guys. Uh, do you want? Hello where, everyone. Where do we sit? I'm gonna. Are sit we here. on stage on our own? No. No. Someone else. Is do coming. I sit on the couch? Oh, maybe we are. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you got okay. comfy there. You've got a whole couch All to right. yourself. Hey guys. Uh, my name is Brian. Uh, Terrorizer. So we're gonna be showing you a game called The Little Acre, which is uh, a game from this fine gentleman over here at Pewter Games. That one of their uh, games that they gave me the, the privilege to do some voice acting for the first time. I've always kind of wanted to do some ah. voice acting. So they said, hey, do you want to do uh, voicing for our main character, uh, Aiden? And I was like, yes, of course. So uh, we're going to show you what the game is like. Hopefully you like it. We don't know when it's going to be out, do we? Uh, a few months. We're nearly months. there. We're nearly there. So um, hopefully you like it. And I think hopefully we'll be also opening the floor to some questions. So if you want to ask, you're wearing my t-shirt, I see you. Yay. <laughs> so um, if you want to ask us some questions, we should be going around with microphones later on if you want any questions about the game or whatever. OK? OK, so I did not we know we were going to be in control of the microphone. Yeah, they're giving us too much freedom. Yeah. We can do anything. You don't have a professional to put up here, do you? This is weird. You want me to <laughs> talk? OK. No, we're good. We can handle it. Your funeral. All right. All right, so are we on screen? We need it? Oh, no, it's me. Hi. Here we go. Here we go. OK, so this is the little acre. And this guy here, this is Aiden. This is the, the character that Brian is playing. That's me. I considered going oh, we can't hear your amazing voice acting, like the whole point of this. But I knew that if I wanted to go back to Just imagine soon. something really good. Yeah, it's just my voice. I wasn't coming back until I found it. There it is. There you go. That's really yeah. good voice acting. I had so, to really so get into the character. <laughs> so what's happening here is uh, Aiden, uh, it starts in the real world. He's looking for his dad. His dad is this weird inventor guy. And so Aiden finds this machine that transports him to this like fantasy universe. So just for the purpose of the demo, we're just starting here. And right now, he's just trying to figure out his way around, trying to figure out what's going on. <gasps> Did you like that voice acting? <gasps> You like that? That was good. Professional gasp. So all the animations are like hand-drawn animations. That's right. Isn't it? Yeah, they're all frame-by-frame so, frame animations. Yeah. So really good uh, animations done by the guys in Pewter. That I, I saw the early build and I could see yeah. how much it's changed. And it's really like I, there's a lot more to do. Like that's going to be done. No, I mean, until the all, final all of the in-game animations are totally done, so we're like, we're wow. nearly there. Right now, the yeah. animators are working on like a big final cutscene that happens at the end. It's all dramatic and stuff. Okay. Uh, but yeah, all the in-game stuff is done. So this is the other main character now. This is Lily. So this is back in the normal universe. Yeah, this is back in the real world. This is and like this 1950s is my, this, Ireland. Yeah, this is homeland. my daughter. This is your daughter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So for a majority of the game, it's kind of like kind of puzzles. So you kind of go around and look for objects and collecting certain objects and trying to figure out how to put those objects together to kind of get from A to B. Yeah, so if anyone's familiar with adventure games, you know, they were real popular in the 90s. That's what this is all about. It's like really focused on the narrative, the experience. Um, so in this case, you know, Lily's back in the real world right now, and she hasn't realized that Aiden, that, that Brian, has gone to this other uh, fantasy world. But eventually she will. And yeah. then she'll start looking for him, and she'll go after him. And then it's kind of just about how that story intertwines. Right, so the problem here uh, is that she wants to go outside to her little make-believe shop. But uh, Aiden says, hey, if you go outside, that garden gnome is my informant, and he'll tell me that you did. So through this kind of loophole, she's like, ah, but you didn't say anything about climbing over the wall. So she makes an improvised slingshot. 
And this, and this is where you get to see my favorite character in action. <laughs> your favorite character is not your own character, no? Yeah, it's Dougal. So humble. This, this dog is just the best thing ever. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> I absolutely love Dougal. in a parallel universe in a lot of trouble. <laughs> hey, Breeze, you didn't pay for that. So now this brings us back to what Christopher was talking about, the gnome. Yeah. So she thinks this gnome is like a security guard. So that's why she hopped over the wall, is to avoid this gnome. Wait, if Dad's bike so, is still here. So this is like a plot moment here. She realizes the bike is still I here. Originally she thought, oh, maybe he just sure cycled off. And now that she sees that the bike is still here, she's like, wait, that means he's actually still around here somewhere. So it's from this point then that she starts looking for him. But we need to just take care of this gnome. This is a bit... Yeah. So oh violent. My God. <laughs> so you decapitate the gnome. Yeah. <laughs> she's therefore, ruthless. Therefore, he can't, he can't tell my, uh, her dad. Yeah. From the gnarled and twisted branches of bizarre trees to the clamor of unrecognizable creatures filling the air. So now, I don't know if we explained what exactly my character is doing in this he's, universe. We're he's just totally lost right now. And, you know, he comes through this weird machine, but when he tries to go back through it, there's no power, like it's dead. So he has no other choice than to just explore this new like, yeah. world that he's in uh, and try and find like a power source for that machine. So the way we do that is, you know, rather than just walking around, it's kind of a puzzle. He needs to get through this door up the top right, but it's locked. And the only way to open it is by touching the blue lamp. So this is like a little, a little puzzle that you have to figure out like your way around. I remember watching Nogla play this. Do you remember that? Yeah, he, he wasn't so I good. I don't know what to do. He wasn't so good. What's going on? <laughs> they just kept I, in I the think same just lamp like, over and over. Yeah, he, he liked to just touch the lamp so he could hear you talk. And then he just talk. say, Brian, you're a really bad voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nogla. <laughs> love you, love you too, buddy. So yeah, so you need to try and figure out your way to the blue lamp. Like the blue lamp yeah. is the, the door opening lamp. There we go. Open. And then you have to then try and figure your way back to the door. Well, like a lot right. of these kind of games were, I remember when in the 90s, a lot of floppy disk games, early CD yeah. games, a lot yeah. of these kind of point and click adventure games were out. And uh, oh, what was it? Little big, little big Adventures? Did you ever play that? Was it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know about that one. Uh, there was something like that, and it was. Like, when I saw this, I could see definitely what the inspiration was for this kind of game, because there's nothing like this really these days. The point and click kind of adventure. Yeah, I mean, it's like they they were hugely popular in the 90s. They were huge. Then uh, they huge kind of went the away when 3D games came along, and then I think they're, they're, there's like a resurgence yeah. now. You know, they're kind of coming back. So we got to grab the trusty bear. Um, so what we're trying to do is, you know, we're, we're trying to keep that kind of classic approach to adventure games, but streamline it a little bit, you know, it's not, it's not hugely difficult. Um, and then, you know, we've got this weird thing where, although this is the normal side on perspective, in the other world we make it isometric. Like, so, which is see those uh, etchings on the wall? Are they... Oh, they're gone, they, sorry. Yeah, but they're kind of clues, are they? They are. The, at the start yeah. of the game, when you're playing as Aiden, when you're playing as Brian's character, you have to figure out what all that means. And, and that's how you have end up, you know, you eventually end up yeah. activating the machine and, and traveling to the other universe. So that's a little hint. If, if I see another t-shirt, I can see you over there. Good man. <laughs> How's <Nice>. it going? <laughs> all right, so here we go. So now she's going into her father's... Labo uh, the workshop, yeah. This little workshop. And that's where she kind of, kind of put everything together and realized something's not right. I really enjoyed doing the the voice work for, for when you had to go through the machine. When I got to, I got to scream as loud as I could. You screamed. You did Don't know scream if anyone very loud. Anyone here watch Dragon Ball Z? Anyone? I got to go Super Saiyan. I got to scream as loud as I could in the recording booth. I, I think I think you recorded that bit. You might have put it in a blog. A vlog. Oh, yeah, I think if I anyone hasn't it seen blog. it, they should check it out. Yeah. So that right there is the machine that gets me to where I am now, my character. Little Star Trek nod there. Dougal, this must be where everyone went. What if something happened? I need to go after them. 
Okay, so she needs to hop in, but she needs to leave a note first. And we leave this here. Don't, if you ever write a note and you give it to your dog, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's just cruel. <laughs> so cruel Dougal. to Dougal. <laughs> so cruel to Dougal. So now she's coming into uh, Clonfira, which yep. is the name of the world that I'm currently so stuck in. So now we come in. back to you. Here we go. And it just gets worse and worse. So this is where Aiden's going to have a conversation yeah. with Mayor. Another good gasp there. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I don't see. So this was done by Sean. Is Sean here? Sean is coming tomorrow. Uh, He's coming tonight. So yeah. my best friend Sean, actually, who's a professional actor, is this character here. Oh, just mayor. I'm not sure where I am. Can you help me get home? Maybe help, help each, each other. other. Oh, so, Mare is pretty much one of the is indigenous kind of people yeah. of this world, of yeah. Clonfira. So, he's going to try and help us get back. And unfortunately, someone's, someone's coming into this world, which we're trying to get out of. Yeah, so th it, we're always trying to have a contrast between the two yeah. characters. So. You know, she just arrived there and did a perfect somersault, and she's really into it all. She's really excited about everything. But when Aiden arrives, he just, like, lands straight on his face. I just noticed. What's that? Is that a teddy bear on the it top? It is. Right? It's the teddy bear that we sent through as an experiment. Ah. It, didn't, it didn't work out so well I for him. Oh, that's a nice little touch. Once long ago, they had machines kept us warm and safe. Now I am alone, and the machines not work. Well, I'll take a look, but if I do, will you help me get home? By fixing the machine, you return home. So it's the same generator that powers the lab. Okay, show me. Oh. I deserve an Oscar. What? I deserve an Oscar. <laughs> if you do say Not so really. yourself. Not really. <laughs> I swear to God. You did a good job. I think when I first did the voice, <laughs> I hope... What, better off just doing one of my Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. voices. You, you started off trying to do a certain, like a specific <laughs> yeah, voice. In the end, said, it worked you know out what? better to just, just do your natural it, voice. Just keep yeah. it normal. She's so much cooler. Look. She just breaks it. She's not going to bother with all that yeah. touching lamp stuff. Just wreck everything. Lily is so much cooler Except than me. Except it's a bit different this time. Yeah. So remember someone that was playing the demo was asking... <laughs> This is good. Right, so let's take care of this. Oh, well. And that's the end of Lily. No. <laughs> or and that's the it? whole demo that we've got so for you there. Nice thank and short. You. That's, that's the demo for the Little Acre. Um, we hope you can uh, maybe ask some questions about the game or anything. Yeah. If you have anything you want to ask, well, we can open it up now for questions, can't we? You're coming on. You're yeah, going to take over. Yeah, Where were you? You just I, walked off. I know. I got, I got excited. I, I ran away. I apologize. Yeah, you just Let left us. And I was like, right, okay, I'll be the host. Uh, it's, uh, if you guys have got any questions, uh, if you want to head over to the left-hand side of the stage and we'll be able Somebody to feel Somebody please ask feed. a question. Come on. Well, I've got Come a question on. for you guys. What, have you got a release date? Uh, no exact date, but yeah, we want to have it out in a couple of months. Um, we're going to go for Steam first. Ideally, we'd like to do everything simultaneously, so we also want to do Xbox One and PS4, even though we haven't said that yet, but yeah, probably PS4. Yeah, I uh, want to take a little bit of credit for the yeah, PS4. Yeah, you can take a little <laughs> Because we put up a video about the game, and all the comments were asking about PS4, PS4, and then we went to PAX South, and PAX South was unbelievable. We had a, a small little booth, like we have uh, for, let's say, just a, an indie developer uh, little booth to showcase this game, and we were just swarmed with people. We had, I tweeted out, a load of people came, and then PS, uh, PlayStation came over and then talked to Chris, and... Yeah, because everyone's just like, when's, when's PS4 release, when's PS4 yeah. release? And, and then the, the guy was like, I'm actually it. from yeah. Sony, here you go, and then, yeah. So, uh, people that were commenting on my video, if you see this, that was awesome. That was because of you guys, so really, you. that they got to see that people were actually wanting... And that's awesome, because you, you, you're organically building a fan base yeah. that instantly yeah, yeah, yeah. want what 
what you guys have given him. And stylistically, it's one of the, the prettiest games yeah. we've ever had on this the, stage. And the artwork is really impressive. I, I love it when my crew all go, oh, yeah. Ooh, that's really nice. Yeah, you know, you know you've done right. something yeah. good. Yeah. So. It's, I think it's kind of a breath of fresh air in comparison to like games that you see now are just heavy intensity, kind of, you know, heavy graphics, explosions, all this. This is kind of a nice little step back to Zombies. actual genuine artwork and... Uh, like it's a very it's a very Irish theme from the early 50s. Yeah, so I mean it's set in Ireland. Uh, art, the artwork, you know, it's all hand painted, hand drawn animations. It's all frame uh, frame by frame animation. Yeah. So we're we're going for that, you know, uh, like Don Bluth look, you know, American Tale, Land Before Time. Yeah. Um, there was actually a, a perfect example of a scene where uh, Lily was in her little kind of. If you could see uh, on the screen, well, you can't really see. Oh, you can over there. Yeah, yeah. To the right side, Lily has her little kind of. Uh, stand. Yeah, that was in the demo. They saw. And so when it transitions all the way across, it's one giant image, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's just yep. one giant painting. Really big much. painting. Like it's, amazing. It's, it's not just a series of little uh, sketches. It's one giant piece of artwork with multiple layers, obviously. Yep. And it's just really, be I've seen the guys, I went into their studio and saw them working on it. And I was like, oh, wow, that's actually beautiful. In the very early stage, before they even asked me to do voicing for it. I got to see this house being uh, yeah, drawn. Yeah, that was one of the one earliest just things. A so, line, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to see how it started off with just this house, yeah, and yeah. how it's just kind of progressed on with with all the different artwork in like in Clonfira and also in the normal world. Time consuming, but worth it. Yeah, worth yeah. it. And that is that is the key if it's worth it. Yeah. We actually have a question. Yes. Woo. Hello. Hello. Um, are you going to make a sequel, and would you do more voice acting for it? If we do a sequel, obviously you'll do the voice acting. You have no choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm open to I'm open to it. Yeah. No, I, I mean, really want, I just want to. I hope people really enjoy this one. You yeah. Know, first, I just want, like, I'm, I'm. My God, it sounds like I'm actually a professional voice actor here. Like, <laughs> are you gonna do a second one? I'm probably terrible when you when you play this. You're like, actually, Brian. Do you know what? Don't. No, <laughs> They're going to get a nice deep masculine voice guy to do the voice next no, time. I mean, so. that's exactly the, Look, he's not an old guy. He's not a big guy. You, you suited it perfectly. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've no plans to do a sequel yet. Uh, you know, our, our next game will probably be something completely original again. But yeah, absolutely. If people enjoy it and people want to do a sequel, we'll definitely do that in the future. So, and if we do, we'll be giving Brian a call. Yeah. Thank you. You awesome. just did that for me. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Hi there. Hey. Uh, I'd just like to ask, what's your inspiration for the game that you've made so far? The inspiration? Um, honestly, I have no idea. We, <laughs> we kind of just made it up, you know, from the very start. We were like, uh, we had a, something similar to this where it was like Aiden would find something in his shed and we wanted to do something kind of like a, where he would get shrunk down and it was kind of like a, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience vibe to it, um, which is why we still have that idea of the characters looking all small and stuff. But in the end, we then changed it. So instead of the whole game taking place on like the floor of his garden shed, he's getting transported through this like machine to another world. Um, so like we had this basic idea for the story and then it, it kind of, we shaped it over time, you know, like I couldn't, I wish I could say that we just wrote this perfect story and then made this game around it. But actually it was oh something that, that we kind of um, grew over time. And sometimes we add things in and take things out. And there were other characters originally in the game that aren't now. And there are new characters in that we hadn't originally planned for. So um, yeah, it's a lot different from what we originally intended. I don't really know inspiration wise. I have no idea where it came from. I think the, the story might have been inspired by the game that we wanted to make, which was just like something with an adventure at its heart. And, uh, and this was just the story that came out of that. Thanks. Hiya. Um, do you know what the price range would be for the game? Do, sorry, what was that? The price, price range. Price range. What, what? The price range. Oh, the price range. Sorry. How much are the monies? Uh, yeah, we're, we're thinking like 15, you know, 14 99 Yeah, bet, bet that. And it'll be, you know, it'll be the same on on Steam and, and Xbox and, and stuff like that. I think later we'll do like a tablet release as well, so you can play it on tablets l like later in the year, and maybe that'll be a reduced price because by then the game will be out, but about 15 on launch, yeah. I think also soon we're gonna start doing pre-orders, so we'll do like a discount if you pre-order as well. Maybe like 12 pre-order, 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 <laughs> pre-order. I just snuck that in there. I'm gonna remember your face, <laughs> and if you don't pre-order, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> But thanks, thanks for the question. <laughs> cool. Cheers, dude. Um, how did you get into programming games? Great question. Uh, I mean, I personally didn't do the programming. Like, so I, I, uh, I set up the company with uh, another guy, Ben. Me and Ben started Pewter Games. Uh, he does the, the gameplay programming. 
He's um, the brains. Yeah, but we both actually met in college. We were doing a master's in games design, or a master's in digital games, it was called, and that's how we met. And that's actually kind of where the original game came from. We had to do a major project where over the course of like four months, you have to make just this small game. And we made, a th it was called The Little Laker, and it was similar to this. And uh, you know, once we graduated, we were like, hey, let's, let's start a company and let's do this properly. So we made a few other games in between then just, just for kind of fun and learning and stuff like that. And then we came back to this and we're like, okay, let's do this proper. We started from scratch. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. I went, I did it in college and uh, I just kept practicing and that's it. So if you're into it, have a look around. There's a lot of, like in Ireland, it's a bit different. It's getting better now, but yeah. in the UK, you know, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, of, of... I don't know if Coda Dojo is over here. Is yeah, Coda probably, Dojo? Probably, probably, There's yeah. a lot of... Are you interested in doing, like, game development? Right. From what you should do, because uh, I did, like, uh, Java development and Android development in college, and it is somewhat similar. Yeah. Uh, I was terrible at it, but, like, <laughs> one thing I would advise and wish I did is start learning program, because it's pretty much like a language. From a nice, from a younger age, and if you start now, you'll be developing you'll be your own games. Way better than we ever will be. You'll yeah. be developing your own games from, you know, 15, 16. So if yeah. you're interested in it, there's like software like Scratch, I believe is one. It's a good there's example. a few other ones, and that just gets you into it nice and early. And it's very easy to do. So yeah, the uh, great thing is they're all free now. You know, yeah. well most of the the engines just that you do can it use. at so home. So you don't even need to wait until you get to college. You can start practicing now. Yeah. You can start learning in advance, and you'll be a genius. And then you're going to make like the next Minecraft or something <laughs> like that. And then just remember me. Okay? Answer <laughs> <laughs> your question, dude. Oh, dear Christ. Oh, who's this guy? <laughs> uh, I was wondering what's the recommended amount of dead or dead wham I should have to show for? Sorry, All the what, did you, what did you say? Uh, what? What's the recommended wham? Sorry, ra are you talking jo, jo, about, oh, show, talk about Shovo? Oh, I think he's talking about RAM for a server. Many, many dedicated WAMs. Okay, thank you, Jack. Okay. <laughs> what, what kind of car do you want to drive when you're older? A Wambagini? Wham <laughs> wham Thanks, Craig. Wambagini. Mini Lad, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> Appreciate lad. it. Can we get a round of applause from Mini Lad? <laughs> Thanks, Craig. God damn it. <laughs> Have you ever had any thoughts about making a co-op mode? Oh, an intelligent question. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I would love to. I really love co-op games. But I've a, never seen it being done in an adventure game. A co-op mode, uh, I would find, like, this kind of game is more of a campaign-based kind of, yeah. you know, I don't think co-op, oh, no, it wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be able to see this kind of game as a co-op game. Yeah. But in future games that they make, you never know. Multiplayer based games, yes, but this kind of Quite game possibly. is literally because there's a game I used to play that was, I think it was uh, Sherlock Holmes, I believe was yeah. the game, and it's very much like this. And it's just one person, click, 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 you just play on your own. I so. mean, now that you've said it, I've got loads of ideas running through my head, but, yeah, you, uh, you but no, not for something. this one. We're not doing any more changes. Yeah. <laughs> we Way need too to late. just finish it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But well, thank you. How did you get into the voice acting? And um, do you know them games where you have to like simulate your face and then do L that? L.A. Like, Noir and the yeah, likes of that. Yeah, whatever that is, yeah. Would you ever do that? A what? Would you ever do that? Uh, that? Wow, you need the capital for that kind of technology. Also, a uh, nice t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, nice t-shirt. Um, so what was the, the first question was... Well, how did you get into voice acting? How right? did I get into voice acting? Well, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, the likes of um, uh, Andy Serkis, who does um, like Gollum, and he does a lot of CGI work. That's my kind of like goal, would be to do kind of CGI movie stuff and voice different voices. Uh, like I always just kind of do imp impersonations, and it just kind of fed through, and just put it on YouTube. So I'm kind of known for voices in a way. So Chris was just like, would you like to do voice acting? And I'm like, yes. I just never had access to it, doing, uh, you know, it, my it, first opportunity of doing voice acting. So, yeah, it was, we kind of have mutual it was friends. really good timing. Like, yeah, yeah, because we had met Brent, uh, Brian a few times. Uh, and then we were at the stage then when we had done all the writing and we had the game and we started, we needed a voice actor. And it was just that day when I was thinking we desperate. need a voice actor. He they just were put out a tweet going, YouTube no is available. really cool, I love YouTube. No one else was available. Yeah. No, no, and that's not it, like, that's not it. We hadn't even looked yet. I hadn't started looking. But yeah. he was like, YouTube is great, but my dream job would be to be a voice actor. I was like, oh my God, Yeah. maybe I should ask Brian. And then yeah. I was like, you want to do it? And he was like, yeah, I'd love, I'd to. love to. I'd love to do it. I love doing voices, uh, anything like that. Just get my foot in the door to do voice acting. So I took this opportunity. Uh, but the second question about uh, 
face recognition kind of technology, that's incredibly expensive. Uh, yeah. It depends on how well the game does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, the question uh, is just, would you do it, right? Like, uh, would you would do I all mocap oh, and stuff yeah. where you have uh, to act, mo mo not just Are you voice? asking if I do? I kind of answered that when I was talking about like Andy Serkis doing yeah. uh, CGI work. I would love to do that. Like, I love Planet of the Apes. I don't know if anyone here likes uh, like the new Planet of the Apes movies. That's all him in like a green suit. That's what I would love to do. I would, yeah. So pretty much, yes, I would love there to do go. that. If anyone here is from a company that does <laughs> that, please come Throw and say Throw your hello. business card at the stage would, right now. It worked last time with Sony, so <laughs> yeah, who knows? That's true. That's true. Who yeah. knows? If, uh, yeah, if anyone from Sony, yeah, the Sony, Sony like head for movies, uh, I'd love to do that. So yes, I would love to do that. Thank you. Awesome stuff, and that's a great way to finish it. Um, I've got one last question. When yep. you guys finish the version, do you reckon you're going to bring it back to Insomnia to show us? We'd love to. Yeah, love absolutely. To. Wicked. Yeah. Hey, we it. have got one in August, and we've got one in December, so whenever you get that You're finished, coming to Ireland. We are coming to yeah, Ireland. Yeah, we're coming to Ireland. So that, that's going to be fun. Uh, I might be at that. So hopefully... When, when is the Irish one? Do you know? I actually don't know. Oh, but you said no. there's one in August. We could do August. Oh, yeah. We cool. could do that. And, and for yourself, fun. you're back on our stage tomorrow morning with uh, with yeah, your uh, friends Tom, with the Craig. recommended ramp. And who else? Who else are we on with, Craig? My voice just peaked there. Sorry. We're on stage tomorrow. Yeah. It's yeah, we you are. You and Mini Lads, 11.45 yeah. on the Expo stage. This stage. This stage right, right yes. here. So if you're here tomorrow, 11.45. Right yes. here. Awesome we'll see, stuff, but we'll for see now, you there. ladies and gentlemen, round of applause to Chris and the Terrorizer. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank Appreciate you. it. Awesome stuff. So next up on our stage at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a and a with some of the YouTubers. We've got Sam Gladiator, we've got Tortoise, and we've got Grion. So we're going to be back here on the Expo stage at 2 o'clock.